Uh, good morning to all of you. So let us now uh, continue with the data pre-processing tools. Uh, I will just uh, brush through what we have done earlier. Uh, this is a this is actually a necessary step to um, develop the machine learning models. Today we will also develop our first. Uh, uh, ML model, uh, which is a simple linear regress regression, right? So we will see that how data pre how these uh, data preprocessing tools help uh, in further developing the machine learning models. As usual, we are importing the three standard libraries: NumPy, Matplotlib, dot Pyplot, Pandas. Then we are importing this data set, which I have circulated also. And um, uh, this is, uh, X is the matrix of features, Y is the dependent variable. We have created the matrix of features in such a way that uh, this, the same template can be applied to uh, many of the machine learning models that we will develop. Because assuming that, of course, the dependent variable is on the last column. Even if there is a change in the uh, the positioning of the dependent variable or some change in the matrix of features, I think you, you can change the uh, indices to uh, properly address the matrix of features and dependent variables. Dependent variable. All right. So let's keep running. Because uh, one, one of the you know, pre-processing tool was left actually. Uh, which I could not complete last time, which was feature scaling. We'll do that also today. And then we will start with simple linear regression. Okay, let's run this command too. So it, the first step was missing data. Uh, if you see the data set, at some positions, the data is missing. Here it is NAN, which is not a number, not a number. Right, so this missing data will be taken care by the simple imputer class, which can be imported from the scikit-learn uh, library. And impute is a module in scikit-learn library uh, from where we will import the class and which will take care of the missing data. Right, so imputer, this, this is the object created and we, we will use the fit and transform to uh, transform the matrix of features. If you run this code, you will see that uh, here, uh, and we have used this strategy as the mean. That means uh, for every column, it will calculate the mean and replace the missing data with that mean, right? So this is how the missing data will be taken care of. And this is encoding the categorical data. Categorical data, as I um, explained last time also, it's um, having two categories, one or zero or yes or no. Um, for example, in our data set, what is there? It, it is, the, the look at the first column, first co in the matrix of features. First column contains France, Spain, Germany. As I told you that if we'll try to encode the countries uh, like 0, 1, 2. So it will unnecessarily, for example, France is encoded with 0, Spain is encoded with 1, and Germany is encoded with 2. It will unless because machine learning models are all based on the mathematical tools. So Germany may get a special preference as it is encoded as two. To avoid that, uh, we will uh, we will uh, divide this one column into three columns, right? So the, uh, these three columns will be for France. We will encode it with a binary vector which is one zero zero. Spain, it is let's say zero one zero. And Germany, it is 0, 0, 001. So by doing this, what, what are we gaining? That no country is um, having any special advantage over the other, other um, countries, right? And if there are three categories, uh, if you see, if there are, let's say, five countries or 10 countries, so that means you will have to create 10 columns uh, accordingly. So what? Um, the code for this is you have to import the column transformer class from the scikit-learn library, use the pre-processing module, and you need to also in, uh, import the one-hot encoder class. 
and then just apply the um, uh, arguments as per uh, the requirement. And here, one thing is important that fit and transform method can be simultaneously employed, which is available in hot, uh, one hot encoder. So if you see here, once you run this code, you see uh, that the one uh, the country column has been encoded as three columns. So one zero 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 one. So Spain has been encoded with zero zero one, and Germany has been encoded with zero one zero. Right. So no special preference is given to any country by doing this, by uh, by taking care of the categorical data in this manner. And you can also uh, encode the dependent variable because there are no's and yeses. We have to encode it in terms of zeros and ones. So if for that, you need to uh, import the label encoder. This dependent variable output is also known as the label. So labeled output, right? So you need to encode the label encoder, create an object and use the fit transform method. And if you do that, you will see that your dependent variable is also converted into uh, zeros and ones. Wherever no was there, uh, the data set was basically uh, some kind of um, uh, purchase decision made by different customers living in different countries. Right. Then you need to split the data set into training and test set. Uh, the class for that is train test split. So we have already done this. And this test side is test size is 0.2, um, meaning by that because 10 entries are there. So 10, 8 will go to the training set and 2 will go to the test set. So we can divide like that. 0.2 is a very genuine figure for splitting the data set. It can be 0.3 also, right? So this is your if you uh, this is your x training x test y train and y four variables will be created. So you can check for all the four variables, right? Okay. Next is the feature scaling. Feature scaling is actually uh, because if you look at as I was uh, talking on the other day also that uh, this is the age column. Uh, which is 44, 27, 30, and so on. And this is the salary column, 72,000, uh, 48,000. So this figure is, in magnitude is quite high as compared to the ages, right? Because um, uh, machine learning model will not understand whether it's a salary or what kind of uh, entry has to be there. So these figures need to be scaled to almost equal uh, levels. So that's why this feature scaling is done. Right, feature scaling means for a particular feature, we have to scale down the data. All right, and to do the feature scaling, <coughs> sorry, you need to you need to use the scikit-learn library only. Use the uh, pre-processing module and import standard scalar class out of that. Create an object sc equal to standard scalar. Right, and you need to actually um, you need to actually uh, do the feature scaling for all the rows right and if you see here if you see here uh, this is first this is column number 0 column number 1 and column number 2 and this because age uh, the column for age becomes the column number 3 and this becomes column number four. So we have to apply the feature scaling to column number three and column number four, and all the rows, of course. So that's how the uh, indexing is done. X train, uh, to the left of this column, there is nothing. So that means all the rows are included. And this is your, um, call. these are your columns. It will start from three and rest of all the columns. Start from three, that means third is the uh, column for ages. Right, and it will then fit and transform, and it will uh, revert back. It will give the output back to the uh, matrix of feature, back to the same column. And similarly for X test also, we will feature scale the data. Right? And if you do that, you will see that the scaling is proper. And I also told you that there can be two types of scaling. One is standardization, 
uh, I just wrote the formula here. I could not complete the normalization. Uh, normalization is x minus mean divided by maximum value minus minimum value, right? So it is x minus mean divided by max of x minus min of x, right? Normalization is normally applied to a kind of a normal distribution where the data and normalization will put the values between zero and one. Whereas standardization is take the mean, take the standard deviation, subtract every value from the mean and then divide by standard deviation, right? So this will uh, almost put the values between minus three and plus three, right? So standardization gives all most of the times good results. So normally, uh, standardization is applied and norm normalization can also be done but that that is usually done when once the once the uh, numbers are representing normal distribution right so once you apply that you will see that uh, these are this is how the scaling is done all right this is for x train and this is for x test Sir, x test ke time aapne fit underscore kyun nahi likha? Ahan par? x test, 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 test ke, ke time. Uh -huh. You see, uh, we have to actually use the training data. That's a good question actually you have asked. That why we have not used fit for the x test. Now, what this fit method will do? Fit method will actually calculate the mean and the standard deviation. Let's say we are applying the standardization procedure. Fit method will calculate the mean and standard deviation, right? And transform method will apply this standardization and establish all the correlation. Now, if we will do X test, data is basically used for testing our machine learning models that we will develop. So, we will, what we will do is we will uh, do the, whatever the mean uh, or the standard deviation, it will uh, calculate the fit method for the trade. The same has to be applied to the test method also. Otherwise it will scale, um, I mean to, uh, it, so our testing of the machine learning model will not happen in that case. Do you get the point or not? No, sir. See, why we are splitting the data into training set and test set. We have to, whatever, once we will develop the machine learning models, then you will probably understand in a better way. Since we are only doing the pre-processing, um, so splitting the data set into training set and test set. We have to train our machine learning model and then uh, test data Actually, we are splitting the data set into training set and test set, but uh, the it should have happened that your machine learning model should have been subjected to a new data. But since we are you know testing the machine learning model also, and we will create the test uh, data separately. Now, we will train the machine learning model using the training set, right? And then, test data will be applied as if it is new data to the machine learning model, correct? And then we will see whether the machine learning model that we have developed is giving us good results for the test data or not. So if we will apply the fit method here also, then it will include the test data also for calculation of mean and standard deviation. We have not applied this uh, test uh, this x underscore test uh, to fit method so it will actually use the mean and standard deviation whatever was calculated using the training uh, set then it will apply that uh, mean and uh, standard deviation and that standardization process as, as such to the test data and then we will see whether it is producing the good results or not is it fine or not Fine, sir. Fine. You agree, no? So yes, uh, 
I think I hope the things will be more clear once we will start developing the uh, models. So this was actually uh, about the pre-processing tools that uh, can be, and uh, you will see that these tools that we have created, um, we have coded, uh, you will see that most of these tools will be used as such in our machine learning models. Correct. So let us now, uh, I will close this uh, notebook and I will uh, open a small presentation, uh, which is ac actually explaining what is regression and all that. And then we will talk about the code for uh, simple linear regression and then multiple linear regression afterwards we will do. Let me just uh, stop sharing this and I will share now the presentation. Okay. Is it clear? It's a handwritten document, uh, PDF document, which uh, is written by me only. Is it visible? Yes, sir. Let me put it to full screen mode. All right. So let us now look at what is regression and let's try to, let's start building the machine, uh, small machine learning models and then we will move further. Now, what is simple linear regression? First of all, uh, what is regression? Actually, regression is, a, is an important class of uh, machine learning, right? Um, there are we can we can we can consider two categories. One is regression, the other is classification for the time being. Now regression actually aims to predict some continuous real number. So please uh, uh, if you can remember this, regression aims to predict some continuous real numbers. For example, uh, salary or a temperature or any kind of uh, numerical values. Whereas classification will predict the category or the class, whether the input data belongs to this class or the other class, right? So it is. it will predict the class, classification will predict the class, whereas regression will predict the continuous values. It will, pre uh, for example, a salary and all that. We will take, I will take an example also. Now, to start with, there can be uh, a simple linear regression also. What is simple linear regression? When the uh, when when there is only uh, one independent variable, <coughs> x1 in this equation, this is a line equation basically, y equal to mx plus c. x1 is the uh, independent variable and y is the dependent variable. So there is only one independent variable uh, on which uh, this y will depend. Uh, right, and B1 is the coefficient of X1 and B0 is some constant. Now, what, what can be an example of um, a simple linear regression? For example, uh, the, this, this Y is the dependent variable. So how does a person's salary change? For example, this is just an example I'm making and I will take the same example also uh, in the data set. How does a person's salary change with number of years of experience, right? So what is X1 here? Number of years of experience. And how the salary will change will be Y. And one more, one more example can be grade of a student with respect to how many hours he puts in, let's say. So <coughs> what is the, uh, <coughs> excuse me. What is the independent variable here? Number of hours put by the student and the grade of a student is the dependent variable, right? So you, uh, you try to understand the dependent variable that how it changes in the regression model. You have, we have to understand how this dependent variable will change with respect to the independent variable, right? And B1 is the coefficient, uh, how fast the change is happening, how a unit change in X1 changes unit change of i, because this, this will reflect the slope of the line. And, okay. All right, so y is equal to b naught plus b1 x1. b naught is some residual value 
uh, we know that this is an intercept, right? Now, in, our, in, in one of the example, it can be salary. So Y will represent salary here and X1 will represent experience. So B0 plus B1. So let's try to plot a graph between salary in dollars and um, experience. So as the experience is increasing, of course, the salary will increase linearly. So that's why it is simple linear regression. The, the, the model that we are trying to understand is a simple linear regression, right? Now, uh, if you try to, let's say I'm taking some employees, right? employees of an organization, and I'm plotting the salary uh, with their experience. So these crosses are actually the salary points of the employees, right, with respect to the experience. So what is regression? What does regression then means? Regression means we have to put a line, right, through the chart, what is this chart? Chart of crosses. We have to put, put a line through this chart that best fits the data. That best fits the data. We have to actually, we have to actually locate a particular line which will best fit this data uh, that we are trying to, that we have, uh, we have, uh, when you will plot, a, let's say you, have some data and you try to scatter plot. So crosses will give us the scatter plot. And if you use the pyplot uh, plt dot plot function, it will give you the line. So line is actually the uh, the best fit uh, line that will explain this data. There can be some outliers. Let's not go into that part for the time being. So let's say, what is B0? B0 is the initial salary. Let's say if some person is having zero years of experience, so there he can get a start of, let's say, 30K when experience is zero. So that, that explains the point of B0 here. And B1, of course, is the slope of the line. More B1, more steeper the line, and more increases that you will get. So basically, what is regression? We have to... Uh, we have to find out this best fitting line um, that explains the data, all right? Now, how to find, the question is that how to find this, uh, be, uh, this best fitting line? How simple linear regression finds this line? Now, let us say we, let's take, we, let's say we take this one cross, which is the uh, salary and <coughs> corresponding to number of years of experience, right? Uh, representation, uh, okay. So this is our cross will be the salary point. And let us draw a vertical line to this straight line, right? Now draw vertical lines from actual. Now these crosses are the actual observed value, actual values. Ob after, observing the, after observing the values, these crosses are actual values. For example, you are considering uh, an organization where um, 100 employees are there. So these crosses will represent actual salary values, right? And what is this line? Well, what this line will give? This line will give the modeled values. So you have to understand what are ob observed values or real values, and line will give you the modeled values, right? So you have cross, which is the real value, draw a projection on the vertical line falling on the uh, model, um, falling on the model. Now cross is where a person is sitting in terms of salary. Say this person is earning 100K with 10 years of experience, right? Now look at the bottom, which actually tells us where that person should be sitting according to the model, that is in terms of salary. It should be somewhere, now where the person is actually, according to the model, where it should have sit at this plus sign. This is on the line, on the line it is plus sign, and cross is the actual salary. So there is a difference between the 
cross, which is the observed value and the modeled value, right? Now, so this is, cross is, let's say, yi is represented by yi, which is the observed value, plus is the modeled value where it should have been according to the model. And let's denote it by yi hat, actual value, is yi, modeled observation or modeled value is yi hat. And this dotted line gives me the difference between actual earning and what he should be earning according to the model. So this is the difference between the observed and the modeled value. Now to get the best fitting line, take the sum of, take this difference, right? For, you have to do this for all the points. So take this difference, square it, sum it, right? Take each point, project on model line, find the difference, square it, and then take the sum of all this. And then find the minimum. If you then find the minimum, you will get a uh, cert you will get certain line, right? Which is the best fit line. So how actually it happens? Now, this is an example of a line. Now, regression uh, regressor or regression, um, regress, what regression will do? Regression will draw lots of lines, will repeat the uh, process of um, uh, getting the difference between the cross and the plus on each line for every point, right? We'll calculate the sum of each line for every point. And then, the whatever for for the line for which the sum comes out to be minimum all right that will be the best fit line that will be the uh, that will be the best fit model which models the uh, observed values right so there can be of course there can be outliers that some point is uh, somewhere which is not close to this line modeled line. So those are treated as outliers. But otherwise, this line will actually uh, model the observed values, right? Now, okay. SLR, which is simple linear regression, finds the minimum of sum of squares of distances between the observed and the modeled values. Not for one line. The regression will test for multiple lines, and it will select that line for which the sum of squares is minimum. So <clears throat> that's what I have written here. SLR draws lots of lines and counts the sum of squares for every line, and it finds the minimum. And this method is known as ordinary least squares method of obtaining the, of optimization, you can say. So, in the regression, you have to find this best fit line. But I'm I'm at I'm at present talking about the simple linear regression. What is simple linear regression? Where the independent variable is one, right? And when there are more number of independent variables, then we will call it as multiple linear regression. And this is the equation for let's say for simple linear regression, what will be multiple linear regression? It is y equal to b naught plus b one x one b two x two and so on b n x n. Right? There can be other factors also in determining the salary. It can be the experience, uh, which may be x one. Uh, let's talk about how a, how the salary of a faculty member is decided. Experience, then publications, how many publications he makes then courses he attends. So there can be lots of variables here, which are independent variables, which will decide the salary of a faculty member or any employee for that matter. Now, there are, there are more than one variables which uh, need to be taken care of, which need to be, which need to affect the salary. So therefore, this will come under the category of uh, multiple linear regression. Now there are some assumptions actually, which need, which uh, whenever you apply the linear regression, you need to make uh, for the data set. Linearity means that data has to represent a linear um, kind of data set. 
right? Once we are applying the linear regression, then there can be homoscedasticity, multivariate normality, independence of errors, and lack of multicollinearity. Now, these are some of the factors which you can look into data set before applying the multiple linear regression. And if the data set follows these uh, properties or assumptions, then it will give better results as far as finding the best fit uh, curve for the regression. Now let's look at briefly, uh, what are these um, uh, assumptions? Now, first of all, uh, let's look at what is homoscedasticity. In regression analysis, it means a situation in which the variance of the dependent variable is the same for all data. Let's say you are considering uh, two, three, four groups of data. For every group, the variance of the data should be same. And if it is the case, then we will say that data set follows homoscedasticity. In regression, and so this is the first assumption the regression uh, model will make that the data set is following homoscedasticity. All right. The second uh, assumption it is making is independence of errors. The distribution of errors is random and not influenced by or correlated to the errors in prior observations. Whenever an error occurs, it occurs independently. It does not depend on what, were, how, what kind of errors were there in the previous data set, in the previous values. So that's why the distribution of errors is random. It is not dependent, it's not correlated with any value, any other value. So this is called as the independence of errors. So this is the assumption the regression model will make, right? Then lack of multicollinearity. What is this? Multiple regression assumes that independent, <coughs> independent variables are not highly correlated with each other. Like for example, the publications, the course attended, uh, uh, if I will say, let uh, in the case of publication, if I divided conference publications or journal publications, some way or the other, these two uh, variables will be related to each other. It should not happen. It it will uh, it will we will say that it is the lack of collinearity. So multiple regression assumes that the independent variables are independent variables to each other. Also, they are not dependent on each other. Then last is the multivariate uh, normality. All variables to be multivariate normal, data should be normally distributed. Right? It should have a normal distribution. So based on these assumptions, right? we will, uh, once the data set follows these assumptions, then it is expected that the machine learning model that you will develop will, uh, will, will fit to the observed values in a a uh, very nice manner, and there will be scope of less errors and the accuracy of the model will be quite high. All right, there are some more points which probably I will uh, talk about when I will do the multiple linear regression about the um, dummy variables and dummy variable trap. We will talk about this uh, afterwards, but let me come to the, uh, come to creating the simple linear regression model. Uh, using Python. I will stop sharing the screen and I will Okay, so this is the code for uh, simple linear regression. And we are using uh, uh, a data set for uh, handling this, which is salary data. Let me, oh, let me show you the data set first.
this is the data set and let me stop sharing this and share the data set first then we will okay this is the data set uh, that i will be using to create the simple linear regression model now this data set has two columns uh, as i was talking about this is the salary and the first column is years of experience so 1.1 1.3 two years and so on so this this two columns are there one column is for salary the other is for years of experience let's now come back to the uh, python script okay so in as usual we will import the libraries the numpy matplotlib dot pyplot pandas and you already know how to and uh, you will now you see we have started developing the first uh, machine learning model right and you you are what you are seeing here is that we are applying the data pre processing so we have the data uh, we have to first of all import the data set this is how the data set needs to be imported we have to create uh, two categories right Uh, one is the matrix of feature. We have to create matrix of features and the dependent variable. So in our data set, the number of years of experience is the um, is the uh, independent variable, or will fall into you know, matrix of features, and the salary will be our y, which is the dependent variable. And the important thing, if you can look from here, uh, the same. it's the same code that we used that we tried to develop previously and the code is developed in such a way that it you can apply the same code to any machine learning model if you see here the uh, subsetting that we have done it's for all rows and what we have done we have played a trick here that it is all columns uh, except last one to create the matrix of features so if it has two columns or 30 columns if as long as the dependent variable is at the last position it will serve the purpose and this is for the um this is for y is for the dependent variable so let's run this and if you print y and print x also and this is our x so this is our data set basically uh these are the salaries and these are the number of years of experience correct so we have imported the data set next was uh, in our pre processing model if you remember there was two more functions one was for the missing data so since there is no missing data we need not to apply we can avoid those three four lines of code and there is no categorical data also we can leave that part also uh, right so there is no need to apply the code for the categorical data or the uh, missing values then we but we need to split the data set into training set and test set so here it is uh, from scikit learn dot model selection uh, we have all we already know that is the module and the class uh, being used is the train test split and here i am using test size <coughs> test size of 1 by 3 that means point that means uh, the, i think there are 30 entries yeah right 30 entries so 20 will be used for training and uh, 10 will be used for test set okay then training these uh, now let us try to create the first regression model for we have to create a model so and we have to train that model using the training set that's why the title is training the simple linear regression model on the training set now how to create that of course we have to use the scikit scikit learn lib um, library dot linear model this is the module and we need to import linear regression class from there. so once this class is imported right from the scikit learn library we need to create an object you can name anything but here uh, i am giving the name regressor 
and using the class, this object is created, right? And we are doing the fit part, uh, regressor dot fit to X train and Y train, because this Y train will also be a part of the training data. So we are training the, uh, we, are, uh, we are using the fit method for training the machine learning model, which will be, which who will create the machine learning model, regression model. This class, the code in the class will create the machine learning model, which is regression model, simple linear regression model. And fit method will apply to these, uh, that linear regression will be trained using this data set, uh, this training data, this model will be uh, trained. So let's, to run this. Okay, I've not actually run the other part. This part is not run. Okay. All right. So this is how this is the linear regression uh, model created. Now, what we have to do basically, because our this code, what this code has done, this code has created the regression model and it has also been trained on the training set and the <coughs> on the training set now we will start predicting using the x test we what we will do is that to this regressor which is an object created here to this regressor object we will apply apply the predict function and what we will input to this predict function only x test that is the uh, number of years of experience and we will this predict method will predict the salaries as whatever it has learned based on the correlations of the training data it will try to predict for this test set what is this test set number of years of it the last 10 entries of the data which we have split it into test set so we will apply to this regression model <clears throat> using the predict method it will predict and we will save it into a variable what we will call as the y underscore pred right so once we run this and we will if we print the uh, this uh, y pred then it it has predicted these salaries based on the input what is this input it is the test data input and from how it has predicted, because the model was trained using the training data. All right, now what we can do is that we can do some visualization, we can plot the data. Let's see how to do the plotting. Let us try to plot the training data first. Training, the plotting the training data means, let us try to plot X train and Y train. What is X train? X train is the number of years of experience in the training set. What is Y train? Y train is the um, salary in the training set, on the 20 entries uh, of the training set. And we are choosing a color. And we, as I was trying to explain in my uh, PPT also, that if you will use the plt.scatter function, uh, what it will do is that these red, uh, dots are actually the observed values of the data. What we were supposed to do, we were supposed to predict, we were supposed to predict a line, we were supposed to uh, use the regression model must pick a line, which is the best fit to these observed values. How can we do that? We know that we have created a regressor object. And what we will, for this graph, what we will, how we will plot this line, of course, we need to use plt.plot. Scatter will be used for these observed values. Uh, plot function will actually plot a line, continuous line. What is the input? Input is x train. What is, uh, uh, because what we are trying to, uh, this blue line will be uh, drawn using the y, using the y, uh, using the predicted values. To this regressor object dot predict function, what is the input? Input is the extrain data. What, what will be the output? Y, uh, y output, it will be there, but it will be predicted using this 
um, a regressor uh, object. And what is this white range? These are the so red dot. Red dots are the observed values. Uh, this blue line uh, on the x-axis of the blue line is x train. On the y-axis of the blue line is the values predicted by this uh, model. This is for training set only, right? So blue line gives me the line that the regression model has has uh, you know uh, regressed regressed means has found out based on the regression model which is the best fit line to these observations right color for this is blue and rest of we can give it title x label and uh, once we show this once we run this you will see that this is the output but this is for training data right red dots are the training data, observed values, blue line is the regression <coughs> output of the regression model in the form of a line that has been modeled using this regression of that has been modeled using this regression uh, class. All right. Now let us see what will be the what comes out for the test results. Right, so we have trained the model and we see if, as far as the training is concerned, it seems quite okay that all the points are close to this um, line, right? So this model is predicting the salary quite well. So let us apply the <coughs> regressor to test results. Now, what should we do? What are these red dots? Because how many uh, rows are there for the uh, test set? 10 rows are there. So what we will do, plt dot scatter, what will be the input x test and y test? So these dots are plotting for the um, cell, uh, years of experience and the salary. Now this, PL, this is an important, a little bit important line. This is the plt dot plot you should ask me this question that why I'm not inputting here X test, right? Why I'm not putting here X test because once the regressor model has been developed by the regression class, the line equation will remain the same. Whether you input here the X test data or X train data. So we, I'm putting here X train data. It is picking the same line as it was there in the previous graph. So X train data regressor predict. So it is predicting the, uh, this line is predicted. So this is our predicted, uh, this is our machine. The line is drawn by the machine learning model that we developed. Now we are inputting these test values and you will see that the salaries in the case of test data also quite uh, closely, um, uh, qu they are, these, are, these points are quite close to the modeled values. Some points are actually lying on the, uh, on the line. So that means the regression model is predicting for, <coughs> for the sal salaries quite effectively. I think time is done. So this was the case for uh, simple linear regression. Uh, next time I will do for multiple linear regression also where uh, I have used only one independent variable in the for the sim multiple linear regression I will use some more variables also a new data set and we will see that how the things can be modeled and we will also do backward uh, elimination method where some of the variables can be eliminated uh, based on the statistical analysis. If any questions are there you can quickly ask or otherwise I will close the class. Thank you. I will share all this uh, data set also and the code also. Thank you very much.